My name is Kojo Busia. I'm currently the acting coordinator of the African Mineral Development Center, which is the center um, that was designated by the African Union to implement the African Mining Vision. We're currently based at the Economic Commission for Africa, which is located in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. And our mandate simply is to implement effectively the African Mining Vision, which is a new policy vision for the continent for both large-scale and small-scale mining in the continent. Well, I think dialogue is essential uh, to moving any policy reform agenda forward. Um, in my mind, there's been very little dialogues between uh, large-scale and small-scale mining stakeholders. But even between mining, uh, all kinds of mining and the government. So dialogue is critical, if not essential, to bring all parties together. This is a multi-stakeholder sector. Perhaps the most multi-stakeholding uh, sector in any development endeavor is mining or minerals mm -hmm. or extractive sector in general. Partly because each of the stakeholders have a claim uh, to one another or ought to be accountable to one another. So dialogue is the most essential ingredient uh, in fostering progress or any kind of uh, reform or bringing about change that we all desire. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is the key medium. Well, I think we all are dissatisfied to some extent with the status quo. I mean, uh, mining is a sector that has so much potential for everybody. It's, it's as uh, Michael Porter puts it, there's a lot of opportunities for shared value creation. And shared value meaning each stakeholder has a stake, and each stakeholder could potentially optimize its stake or its interest. But it, it requires dialogue, as I said. So what I would like to see is that at the end of this event, we would have come up with two or three practical, very straightforward, less complicated um, items that are implementable, that are satisfactory to all stakeholders, mm -hmm. that could be promoted at a very large scale uh, going beyond conventions and declarations and, and sort of normative principles, which are important, but things that are easily implementable mm -hmm. so can clear and has practical. a clear benchmark, achievable, measurable, uh, and so on. So that's, that's my hope. Well, in my mind, I think the most critical is the mineral rights issue. Why? Because it is the, it's the most critical uh, issue that speaks to the issue of legitimacy for small-scale mining. Why am I saying that? Because if you incorporate uh, small-scale miners as part of the parties, the critical parties, to allocation of mineral rights, and he, by here I mean contracts itself, the very instrument of contract negotiation as part of the first order of mineral rights. Of course, we have licensing and so on, but I think at the level of contract, when you're granting concessions to large-scale miners, you need to consider the interests of small-scale miners in general as part of the deal, because particularly on the part of the government. Because once you incorporate them as actors in the contract, that should be recognized, particularly in the context of how they relate to large-scale miners, how large-scale miners should treat them, or should have some kind of partnership with them. You, you, you sort of legalize their, their existence. Mm -hmm. They're no longer seen as a nuisance. Because oftentimes the perception is that the nuisance to uh, private large-scale miners, but also to government. And they are completely excluded. And I think 
one of the fundamental ways to bring them in as a party to any kind of concession from Ireland is to include them in the negotiating process, but also perhaps in the contract provisions themselves that will allow them to benefit directly yeah. from the impact of last year.